welcome to another episode of Other Items of Interest. I am your host, Jack Zablocki. On today's show, we contemplate the human spirit. We take a good look at the human condition. What it means to be human. What it means to live in modern times. What it means to be alive. And then, we throw down. And how does the day find you? Welcome to Other Items of Interest. I'm your host, Jack Sablocki. We have a show for you today. But before we get to that, we need to talk about our website. If you'd like to visit us online, you can do so at otheritemsofinterest.com. There you can find the show notes or download the show. Um, there we have the links to the stories that we cover on the show. You can follow along, check out mug shots or the videos that are included in the stories. Also, we can be found at Twitter under the handle at other items. Just those two words, other items. Feel free to follow, we'll follow back. Now, on with the show. Portland man used dog poop to make bomb, court papers say from Oregon Live. Portland man now faces felony criminal charges after police say he created a homemade bomb containing dog feces and tricked a former friend, former friend, no kidding, into setting it off. Rob Alexander Stout, 48, placed the bomb into a plastic toolbox and filled the box with dog feces he collected from his dog and dogs that had defecated around a courtyard, according to a probable cause affidavit. He then set the toolbox up to explode upon opening, police say. Stout admitted to police that he had set up the device because he was angry at his former friend for failing to return something of his. One of the things he and his friend had liked to do together was watch YouTube videos of people pulling pranks. Police contacted Stout after his former friend called them April 16th to report that someone had left the toolbox bomb on the back of his Camaro. When he opened it, it exploded with such force that it sounded like an M80 going off and the dog scat was blown out of the toolbox. The man apparently wasn't hurt because court papers don't describe any injuries and Stout wasn't charged with assault. Police who investigated determined that the toolbox contained a battery, wiring, switches, and an airbag from a car. I guess that was used to launch the feces. That's a lot of power. Airbag from a car. Stout was booked into jail Thursday but released after posting $2,000 in bail that same day. Stout was arraigned Friday in Multnomah County Court on a felony charge of unlawfully manufacturing a destructive device. Police who searched his home say they found methamphetamine and a sawed-off shotgun, leading to more charges of meth possession, being a felon in possession of a firearm, unlawfully possessing a short-barrel shotgun. Ooh, when it rains and pours, huh? New York City now has a Wu-Tang Clan district. That's right, the Wu-Tang Clan, that Wu-Tang Clan. Protect your neck. This comes from PIX 11, WPIX, New York. The Wu-Tang Clan will live on forever in New York City streets. The city has designated a section of Staten Island, the borough otherwise known to Wu-Tang fans as Shaolin, as the Wu-Tang District to celebrate the legendary hip-hop group's influence and contributions to the world. Local officials, fans, and members of the community gathered in the neighborhood of Park Hill on Saturday to unveil the sign that made it official. Debbie Rose, a New York City council member who represents Staten Island's North Shore, explained the decision to honor the group, whose members grew up in New York City. The Wu-Tang Clan District is a celebration of their inspiration to the world, and a celebration of their home, Shaolin, Rose wrote on Twitter. And that's about the, that's, that's the gist of it. But there are some quotes from uh, Wu-Tang members. Uh, Ghostface Killer said in a speech at the event, I never saw this day coming. I knew we were some ill MCs, but I didn't know that it'd take it this far. Um, Inspector Deck wrote on Instagram, Wish Mama Love could see this day. Proud, humbled, and amazed. Love my at Wu Tang Clan brothers. And Raekwon said on Twitter, Thank you. Can't believe it. I think every city should have a Wu Tang Clan district. It's only fair. Not 
eat the human placenta, warned Canadian gynecologists. So warning to heed. I've heeded this warning all my life. I've never eaten placenta. Never had the urge. It's not going to happen. A group of Canadian gynecologists is urging people not to eat the human placenta. A recommendation from the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada indicates there is no evidence of a health benefit from the practice known as a word I cannot pronounce. Placentophagy. Placentophagy? That doesn't sound right. Does it sound right to you? How would you say it? I don't know. And there are and and there a potential for serious harm eating the placenta. The placenta is a temporary organ that provides oxygen and nutrients to a fetus. The organ is typically incinerated after childbirth, but sometimes eaten. Here's that word I cannot pronounce. Placentophagy is said to help with postpartum depression, breast milk production, and iron levels, but does not have the backing of scientific research, and that's a problem. That's my two cents right there. you got to have the scientific research backing your claims. Otherwise, you might be doing something bad. And it sounds like people are. Currently, there is no strong evidence to suggest that placental consumption is beneficial for human health, says Dr. Jocelyn Cook, the chief scientific officer of the SOGC. SOGC was that Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada. In case you don't remember, because I couldn't remember what the hell it was. The organization also suggests the ways of preparing the placenta, including eating it raw, cooked, or in a pill form, are not regulated and raise the risk of potential contamination. In 2017, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported that a baby had been sent to hospital with Group B Streptococcus, which was later found in the placenta pills the mother had been consuming. It's gross. The whole thing is gross. I'm sorry I picked this article. Did you guys like it? Let me know. Other items of interest, pod at gmail.com. From Fox News, maggots will be added to sausage specialty foods as meat alternative, scientists claim. If you thought the last article was kind of gross about eating placenta, uh, this one might be worse. I don't know what's worse, eating maggots or eating placenta. I think I'd, uh, I hate maggots so much, but I think I'd have to opt for the maggots. Food scientists at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia, are incorporating insects such as maggots and locusts into a range of specialty foods, including sausage, as well as formulating sustainable insect-based feeds for the livestock themselves. Hoffman says conventional livestock production will soon be unable to meet global demand for meat, so other fillers and alternatives will be needed to supplement the food supply with sufficient protein sources. An overpopulated world is going to struggle to find enough protein unless people are willing to open their minds and stomachs to a much broader notion of food, says meat science professor Dr. Laurens Hoffman. I've never heard that name before. Laurens. It's L-O-U-W-R-E-N-S. Laurens? Laurens? I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, he goes on to say, Would you eat a commercial sausage made from maggots? What about other insect larvae and even whole insects like locusts? The biggest potential for sustainable protein production lies within insects and new plant sources. Queensland Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation team is focusing on pleasing Western palates by disguising insects in pre-prepared foods, says Hoffman. As studies have shown, they shy away from eating whole insects. In other words, insect protein needs to be incorporated into existing food products as ingredients, he says. One of my students has created a very tasty insect ice cream. In terms of other sustainable sources of protein, Hoffman also brings up kangaroo meat, ideal because they don't require grasslands for grazing. They are also supplementing chicken feed, which is currently made mostly of grains, with black fly larvae with promising results. There you have it. I, I'd try a maggot dog, I think. I think I would, a sausage. I'm, I don't know if I could finish it. But I'd try it. Why not?
Well, now that you've had your placenta and your maggot dog, it's time for dessert. And dessert is brought to us from skynews.com or news.sky.com if you'd like. It's Sky News, okay? Just leave it at that. They brought us dessert, maggot ice cream, touted as eco-friendly alternative to traditional dairy-made treat. Fans of the sweet treat could soon find grubs up in their cornet, with the fly larva being touted as a high-protein and sustainable alternative to traditional dairy-made frozen product. I have no idea what I just read. What threw me off was find grubs up in their cornet. But let's continue. While interest has been growing in insects as a more eco-friendly food source in the West, a South African food maker has gone a step further and used maggots harvested from flies as a basis for ice cream. If you check the show notes and uh, check out this link to Sky News, uh, there are plenty of pictures of the ice cream. It looks normal, I guess. Operating out of the Cape Town University of Technology, Gourmet Grub processes the larva of black soldier flies with other natural ingredients before mixing the flavors such as cocoa and honey in an ice cream making machine. Leah Bessa, head of product development at Gourmet Grub, said, Insects are typically environmentally friendly and sustainable to farm because they use very little land, water, and food to grow on. They aren't at risk of climate change because you can grow them in a controlled environment sort of an enclosed area, so you don't have the effects of drought and all those other things that are associated with climate change. And what's really great is that they produce a lot of protein and fat for, and minerals by growing on what would typically be considered a waste product. And then they make it into ice cream, delicious. Yeah, that ice cream you're eating? What made it feasted on waste materials? Enjoy. I, for one, hope this takes off just insanely among all the people in the world. This is from the mirror.co.uk. People are embracing nostril hair and getting thick extensions in bizarre new trend. Yep. It's the beauty trend nobody asked for, but it's here nonetheless. While men and women have been fighting against unruly nostril hair for generations, The latest fad seems to be incorporating natural hair extensions into your life. Yes, you can now kiss goodbye to the eye-watering pain of plucking and the fiddliness of trimming your nose hair. I think that's the first time I've ever read fiddliness in an article. The brave new look was first championed by Instagrammer at great Chen Chen. That's at great underscore Chen underscore Chen if you'd like to go check her feet out. She used false eyelashes to achieve the avant-garde aesthetic, but we imagine if you're blessed in the nose hair department, you won't need to resort to falsies. It did not take long for others to seize upon the look and voila, the tag hashtag nose hair extensions was born. And I did a search on Twitter for um, at nose hair extensions. Um, A lot of it was just this article being linked, but there were I came across a few pictures of people showing off their abundant nose hair. And it's kind of funny looking. I'm, I'm all for it. I like this trend. Uh, a quick glance at this tag will show you just how popular it's become. As an aside, we're not sure how advisable it is to use eyelash glue up your nose, so there's something to be aware of. Um, on the on the mirror's webpage, there's plenty of pictures that you can look at if you t- check out the show notes. Um, they're all very silly. They pose very seriously. That's what gets me. If you're happy to just leave your nostril hair as is, here are some interesting facts. It grows at a rate of 0.35 millimeters per day, and it's actually our friend as it acts as one of the body's first lines of defense against environmental nasties such as spores and germs. So, where nostril hair is concerned, could it be a case of more is more? 
That's the mirror asking that question. I really don't give a shit. Um, yeah, check out the show notes. These are pictures worth looking at. I hope you take up the uh, the fashion trend yourself. Should I do this? Can a 40-year-old man do this? I don't think so. 40, I mean 23-year-old man. That's right. I'm young. Next story. This next article is a third update for us. The iguana, which we've covered twice before, now has a third update. If you don't remember, all five of you who listen, uh, the first article was a man got into an argument with a restaurant manager and flung the pet iguana at him. Uh, the update, the first update was that man's son uh, saying he wanted his iguana back. It was his pet. Um, now we have this third update here from news5cleveland.com. Iguana injured after being thrown at Painesville restaurant manager in protective custody. Now it's getting serious. It's in protective custody. An iguana that was injured last month after a man allegedly threw it at a restaurant manager is currently being held in protective custody. The iguana, who authorities named Copper, and the article doesn't mention this, but in the second update it was said that the iguana's name, as given to him by the 10-year-old boy, was Squirt, or is Squirt. Uh, I know more about this iguana than some of my own family members at this point. Uh, Anyway, the iguana who authorities named Copper was taken to the Lake County Humane Society. The Humane Society is awaiting permission from the courts to treat the animal. The iguana has a broken leg, metabolic bone disease, and poor body condition, according to police. The animal surgery is estimated to cost around $1,600. That's a pretty penny. The man accused of throwing the iguana, Arnold J. Teeter, 49, has been charged with cruelty to animals and disorderly conduct. Shouldn't that guy pay some of the $1,600? He threw the animal. It's be part of his uh, his uh, uh, court thingy. Sentencing. Sentencing? If he's found guilty of throwing the animal? Uh, and here's a message from the Lake Humane Society. We need your help to give this innocent reptile a second chance at life. All donations made to this page will be designated to our Angel Fund, which benefits animals in need of extensive medical care. These donations will go directly to the care of copper, and all gifts are tax-deductible. Any excess funds that are not used for Copper's care will remain in our Angel Fund, and that balance will be used towards the next pet in need of an emergency medical care. And there's a little link at the bottom of the the page if one of you out there wants to make a donation to a lizard. Check the show notes. Otheritemsofinterest.com If I had any money, I might make a donation, but I don't, so... Hope he pulls through. From iguanas to three-eyed snakes. This comes from sky.com, Sky News. Three-eyed snake found on roadside in Australia. And this one is really for the show notes because the picture is all there really is to the article. It's a three-eyed snake. A three-eyed snake has been found by the road in Australia. Northern Territory Parks and Wildlife found the reptile, lovely named Monty Python, on the Arnhem Highway near the small town of Humpty Doo. I'm not entirely sure what I just read is factual. Sounds like a bunch of made-up words. Northern Territory Parks and Wildlife found the reptile, lovingly named Monty Python, on the Arnhem Highway near the small town of Humpty Doo. Okay, it's just Australian. That's all. Sharing the snaps on their Facebook page, they said, The three-eyed snake warns, The dry is coming. (sighs) Rangers say the snake measured around 40 centimeters and was a juvenile. 
X-rays of the snake were taken and revealed it had one skull and not two heads forged together, as was initially thought. Northern Territory Parks and Wildlife said it was gen generally agreed that the eye likely developed very early during the embryonic stage of development. It is extremely unlikely that this is a form of environmental factors and is almost certainly a natural occurrence as malformed reptiles are relatively common. Local media in Australia reported the snake was found in March and after three weeks in captivity it passed away. That's the end of the article. It just ends on that sour note. Three-eyed snake, dead. Check the picture though, it's pretty cool. Get a tattoo of it, I dare you. Man with moose nuggets and carry-on says politics stinks. From the AP. Politics can stink. That was the message delivered by a traveler to airport inspectors in Alaska who found moose nuggets inside his carry-on bag. KTOO Public Media reports the man told agents he collects the droppings and likes to present it for politicians and their bleep policies. I'm guessing bleep means shit policies. TSA spokeswoman Lisa Farbstein says the discovery didn't warrant writing a report and the man was sent on his way with the poop. It's not known if it was the same person, but a man was seen passing out baggies of moose nuggets at the Capitol on the same day as a protest against the governor's proposed budget. Good for him, picking up m moose turds, all in the name of politics. He's cleaning up the streets of Alaska. You are listening to other items of interest. From the AP, Arizona woman attacked by bees after a hive falls on her head. I think that might be one of my, my greatest fears now, having a beehive fall on my head like a cartoon. An Arizona woman is recovering from more than 20 bee stings after heavy winds blew a hive off a tree and it landed on her head. Firefighters in the Phoenix suburb of Tempe say it happened Monday afternoon as the woman picked up her child from daycare. Assistant Chief Andrea Glass says the woman happened to be walking under the tree where the hive was when the wind blew it off. That's three paragraphs all saying the same thing. A woman walking under a tree. Wind blew it off. Hit her in the head. Um, now I lost my place in the article. I'm sorry. I had to make a snide comment, and now I screwed everything up. I just don't deserve a podcast. I don't. I can't speak properly. I can't read these articles. I can't pronounce any words. Ah, oh, here we go. The National Weather Service says wind gusts around Metro Phoenix reach 45 miles per hour. Class says the woman who was stung 20 to 30 times on and around her head. She was evaluated and opted to have her husband drive her to a hospital. I think my voice just cracked. I think I'm finally going through puberty. It's about goddamn time. Uh, right, she was evaluated and opted to have her husband drive her to the hospital. Firefighters sprayed the hive with foam because of its proximity to the daycare and the school. Uh, no word on surviving bees if they're okay. So... Not a great article. There's the age-old redneck conundrum. Chevy or Ford? This comes from fox13memphis.com. Chevy versus Ford argument led to shootings. Standoff, police say. A man was arrested after shooting three others during a Chevrolet versus Ford argument, police said. Mark Edwin Turner, 56, was arrested at around 2 a.m., April 23rd, after a standoff that lasted more than two hours, the Bedford County Sheriff's Office said in a statement. Deputies responded to a report of a shooting around 11.30 p.m. April 22nd at a Bedford home. When they arrived, they found three people outside the home with gunshot wounds. The victims were hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. Turner, his girlfriend, her son, and her son's girlfriend had been having dinner at their home, Bedford County Commonwealth Attorney Wes Nance told WSET-TV. The four were in the front yard when Turner and his girlfriend's son began arguing about whether Chevy or Ford is a better car manufacturer, Nance said. The argument became heated and Turner allegedly pulled a knife. Turner's girlfriend tried to get between Turner and her son and Turner stabbed her in her lower back. Turner then went into the home and retrieved a gun. It's then alleged that Mr. Turner came back... This is all over 
What's better, Chevy or Ford? This is ridiculous. It's then alleged that Mr. Turner came back out and approached his girlfriend's son. Once again, his mother tried to intervene between the two of them. During that time, she was shot a total of five times, all of those injuries occurring on her legs. The woman's son was shot in the arm, and the son's girlfriend was hit by two bullets that Nance said ricocheted. When police arrived, Nance said Turner returned inside the home, but continued to come back outside to yell at officers. Do you think he, he kept the argument going? Like every once in a while, he'd come out and say, you know, Chevy's got an engine that, blah, 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 you know, then he'd run back inside. Uh, police were eventually able to hit Turner with a beanbag and take him into custody. Turner was charged with felony malicious wounding, use of a firearm in commission of a felony, and possession of a firearm by a felon. He was denied bond. So what do you think? Chevy or Ford? Email me at I don't give a shit at gmail.com. That's probably a real email address. Don't email them. It was just a joke. <laughs> When we started this show, we were hoping to get the likes of UFO articles, Bigfoot stories, ghosts, things along those lines. We've had very little of any of it. We had one UFO story, I think, uh, weeks ago. Uh, but here we have a ghost story from Newsweek. Lily Collins says she was visited by the ghosts of Ted Bundy's victims while playing his girlfriend in Netflix movie. Extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile actress Lily Collins. That's the name of the movie, by the way, if you don't know. Extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile. They're not talking about Lily Collins that way. I sure as hell hope not. Uh, Lily Collins said the ghosts of some of Ted Bundy's victims appeared to her as apparitions after signing on to play Bundy's ex-girlfriend, Liz Klepfer, in the Netflix film. Collins talked about the eerie, continuous events in an interview with The Guardian on Friday. I would go downstairs and have a cup of tea, trying to figure out why I had woken up again, she said of her time preparing for the role of Klepfer. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that one right. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. Uh, I started being woken up by flashes of images, like the aftermath of a struggle. Collins came to realize these were images sent to her by Bundy's deceased victims. For most, that realization may come as a terrifying shock, but to Collins, it was a confirmation that her role was important. I didn't feel scared, I felt supported, she explained. I felt like people were saying, we're here listening, we're here to support, thank you for telling the story. Well, that's kind of sweet. What Collins learned through research was the time Ghost appeared to her was during the witching hour each night. The actor cited 3.05 as the time she'd wake up on these occasions, which is one of the first minutes of the believed haunted time. I discovered that 3 a.m. is the time when the veil between the realms is the thinnest and one can be visited, Collins explained of the time. According to paranormal research, Collins is right. The term the witching hour comes from the idea that the hour is when magic or a witch's powers are the strongest, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. The time has histories of being known for paranormal activity, among other strengths in categories like black magic, that makes it easy for humans to have otherwise abnormal experiences. The concept of the witching hour is considered folklore, but has similarities in hundreds of different cultures. To prepare for her role in Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, Collins spent time with Klepfer in real life. She was able to look through old photo albums of Klepfer and Bundy, collected from the seven years they lived together, and even read aloud from Bundy's letters sent to Klepfer from prison. And that's that. I guess I could say the film which features Zac Efron as the charming manipulative Bundy is now streaming on Netflix, if you're a Netflix watcher. Well, that's it, folks. Another episode of Other Items of Interest has come and gone. I'm your host, Jack Sablocki, and we'd like to thank you for listening. We really do appreciate it. Feel free to visit us on the web at otheritemsofinterest.com or on Twitter at otheritems. We'll see you again next week with more stories. 